have an influence. We have something to say. We have something to say. So we're going to pray. Remember, I said it's about who we are, our rights, our abilities, what belongs to us, what we can do, right? Yes, and the authority that's given to us. And then the fact that we are stewards. We're stewards. God's going to ask us, what did you do? What did you do about the situation? Because we might think he's responsible. Oh, God, do something about it. No, no, no. We have to do something. Okay. We have to say something. Right. And what you, I always remember what you told me in your, your uh, uh, one of your last meetings with T.L. Osborne. When he said, God only does one thing. He just talks. <laughs> Glory to God. How powerful that is. And you really, you look at the Bible, you can't find anything else God does. He's not moving around picking up stuff. See? He just talks. Okay. That's power. That's right. That's power. That's right. And that's what he wants us to do. Talk. Talk. Use your mouth. How much effort does it take? How much effort does it take? Doesn't cost too much to talk. Doesn't I'm gonna talk. 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 You getting ready to talk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, can we have that word map again on the on the screen? See, I, I have Dr. Jonah Banzini here. In, in a short while, he's going to be sharing the word of God and leading us in prayer as well. So just start getting ready. When you have a, a man of God like that present in the meeting of this nature, it doesn't matter where you are in this great world. You're going to be marvelously blessed. So get ready. Get, get yourself ready. Let's have the, the world back on the screen because we're going to pray for the nations of the world. And make sure to pray for your country and for and other nations. Nation Wales. See, you call your country by name yeah. and you pray for the leaders of your country. And also pray of Wales. for Princess other nations. Yeah. And while we're at that, the choir is going to be doing three songs. Gracious Father. To the ends of the earth. And from the ends of the earth. Oh, you know, whenever I look at this, Dr. Evans, whenever I look at the world map, I just love what God has made. God's beautiful world. That's the way I think about it. I look at the nations. And they're beautiful. They're beautiful. God's beautiful world. We're going to pray over these nations. And you in your own, stretch your hands to the screen as we pray for the nations of the world. You call your own nation by name and pray. And pray for the leaders of your country. Oh, thank you, Lord. See, God, on the Lord, it over in the name of Jesus, the princess, we pray for divine intervention in our health, in Jesus' name, pray for divine intervention that she will be marvelously helped in the name of the Lord Jesus, and she will make a full recovery in the name of the Lord Jesus, and she will know that the hand of God, the love of God, that has helped her in the name of the Lord Jesus. 
Nasıl bir doktor sahibi bu doktor da haftı? Koş. In this place. Bu stüdyo. And he preached the word. We were stretched out our hands to heal. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The power of God will flow. And men and women will come to Jesus. We will experience the help of God through us. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Salvation. In the name of Jesus to the number one. We will see the Pope guiding our leaders. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And the different sectors, in the name of the Lord Jesus, of God's perfect will be done in wheels, 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 God's perfect will be done in wheels. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we speak peace and atmosphere. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we are sent to the back of the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. We are sent to the back of the church and the center. Thank <laughs> you. 
opportunity to speak to you. I put my notes aside. I have, uh, at the age of about just some of my testimony I'd like to give you and speak to you about some things that you'll find important when you get to be my age. I'm uh, 88 now and uh, very active in the things of the Lord. I started at the age of uh, about 1920. I came into the Lord and immediately went into preaching in the jails. I preached in the Clearwater Jail every week and uh, was continuously on the streets at night witnessing about Jesus Christ. And uh, through this period of time, I was aching and aching to get into Bible college. And um, young, and had a beautiful wife, and immediately, we almost immediately had four kids. It was a house full of us. And um, I... Uh, I wanted so to get into Bible college. I thought I have to have the Bible college to be able to do the things that God is saying in my heart. And, uh, but I didn't have money to go to Bible college. And then I went into a church and they had a sponsorship program to put you through Bible college. It was uh, through a Baptist school in Springfield, Missouri. And I went to that Baptist school and in the first year, now, I'm not going to be braggadocious, but some things have happened in my life that might mean something to you. But in that first year of Bible school, before the year was out, I had a full-time ministry winning servicemen to Christ in three different cities across America. I was uh, having a raise a full budget for uh, workers that I had working for me. I was... Uh, I wasn't a young, young when I went into Bible college. I had four children, a wife, and had been a superintendent of a construction business in Florida. But then I seemed like I've just been winning souls, building buildings, doing things for God. It just was so busy. And one of the things that was such a blessing in my life was my good wife, Patricia. Three years ago, she passed away. And uh, went immediately into the hands of the Lord. I remember 
two weeks before she passed away, I was in the hospital with her and she said, John, my friend came by last night and said that I'll not be leaving the hospital. And I said, well, Pat, you know, we have a positive. We can be. She said, John, my friend has talked to me and I will not be here after this stay in the hospital. And, you know, I, I, I think back on that because several years before that, Creflo Dollar had asked me, he said to me, Brother John, what's going on in your life right now? And I said, well, you know, Dr. Creflo, I'm, I'm trying to get in a new relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, oh, what do you mean? I said, well, as I have been getting more involved with him and the influence of my wife about her friend, uh, God really witnessed to me that I was a great employee. I was probably employee of the month or of the year because it was continuously some project. And prayer was continuous in my life. I, I was praying all the time because there was bills to be paid. There was properties that had to be bought. There were salaries that had to be met. And I went on through all those years, built a first church. We went to uh, Denver, Colorado. And I was speaking to the young soul winner from uh, South Africa that's here with us. And uh, we went into that church in a time when uh, churches were kind of slowing down and uh, things were getting a little bit more liberal in America. And we went in there with a soul winning spirit. And in five and a half years, we went from nine people in the basement to 2,600 people on Sunday morning. It was explosive, 80, 90 people a week being saved. Had a full-time soul winner on staff. Everything dollar after dollar I was having to raise, I was having to raise. And finally, I'm not a man that doesn't pray. But God spoke to me, and I look at your young faces, and I say to you, in all you're doing, be sure that you have a friendly, friendship relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He wants to be your, he is your Savior. He wants to be your Lord, but he's asking that you be friends with him. And I have to say I'm embarrassed. I'm uh, 88 years old. And I am as like a child right now, just trying to get into this relationship with that my wife had such a, it, I was almost jealous of it as I was busy with other things. She'd tell me about her and her friend and what they were studying and, and what he had said to her and what we were supposed to do. Sometimes I would have me on a way to get something done. And she'd say, John, my friend has talked to me and you're headed in the wrong direction on this. And the first few times I thought she had the gift of suspicion. But I found out later she had the gift of knowledge. And I started listening to her and all of my confusions that I was getting into stopped. But that's a little different story. But what I really want to drop into your hearts, and I look at your young faces. You've got so many years ahead of you, so much to do, and big projects to get done. Big finances will have to come into your life. You're going to have staff. You're going to have workers. You're going to be part of a very, a very expensive situations. But do not just become employee of the month with Jesus Christ. But come into that relationship that I saw on my wife's face those last days in the hospital. As she was not the least bit concerned. As the report came in that she was getting weaker, that this, things were out of control, couldn't be stopped anymore. She just be at peace, John. It won't be long and I'll be with my friend. And if I can say anything about what I know now, as I and, and I'm coming into a different relationship with the Lord, I'm, I'm finding myself not being so formal when I pray, not having my little list and telling, talking about what we need to get done and, and how I need help with this and I need help with that. And Lord, we need a new music minister and how in the world are we gonna do that? And it would just seem like I was continuously about business. And there is business. Jesus said it. He said, I must be about my father's business. But in the process, he was in total fellowship with God the Father. And now I can do nothing more today than even if I could tell you how to have a million dollars, it wouldn't be worth what I'm telling you now. Because what I'm telling you now is you must be friends with Jesus Christ. And you must nourish that friendship. Keep it moving. Keep a conversation with him, not just a, uh, not just a business relationship, but a, 
a constant conversation. Now, Pat and I were very close friends. My wife, Patricia, and I were very close friends, and we had great conversations. The times that I get with the Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm pressed upon now at my old age to change habits. You can form a habit of being a friend with Jesus, being in a, in a contact with him. And I, I speak all across the world right now to you. Our God is real. I, 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 if, if I had it all to do over again, any of the hardships, everything else, it's, I would go right through it again and more. There's nothing as wonderful as living a life for Jesus Christ. But you miss a big part of it if you simply are an employee. And you don't come into that close, tight friendship. Uh, now that my wife is gone, if there's going to be that relationship, I have to make it. I have to find I have to find times that I just just talk to him about things that are going on in my life. And, and it's so hard for me to do, and, but it won't be if, I, if I'd have started younger like Pat did. It was all of Pat's life. She was talking like he, she had a friend, a friend, a friend. And I don't know what else I could say. I could, I could talk to you. I have notes here that uh, literally people have turned some of the things I say into tremendous finances. Uh, ministries have been paid off debt-free through things that God has let me say. Uh, souls have places to stand and places to sit and places to sing and television stations bought all over the world that God let me help do. But in the doing, in the doing, you must not let yourself just be an employee of Jesus Christ. You must see to it that you remain a friend of his. And I know even today as I'm talking... I, I couldn't have talked like this before. So two, three years ago, I couldn't have talked like this. But I'm, I'm, I'm like a kid, little, like a little kid, and I'm just saying, God, I want to be your friend. I want us to be friends. I want us to have a relationship that's more than the business of our ministries, but that goes into the love and the uh, the camaraderie, and that I, you know, I, I had such a time with being alone, but that's. It, it, you can put me alone now because I'm starting to have this new relationship where I'm, I'm not alone in that hotel room. I'm not alone on that airplane. I've been over 8 million miles with one airline. I've worked hard. I've been a tremendous employee. But there's no employee. There's not going to be a prize for employee. But I want to come there and I want to be greeted at the gate. That's <laughs> my friend. Come, come. Come, my friend, get tight with him. Get tight with Jesus Christ. And you do that by just talking to him like I'm talking to you. <laughs> and don't wait till you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s because you get these habits formed. But form habits in your youth to be a friend, a personal friend. 